Hey, how you doing, Justin? Back with you for another Transcribing Suggestions lesson. Now, this is part two of the Power Chords little series, so do make sure you go on and check out the first one first because there's loads of suggestions in that that are going to help you with your transcribing of all things, not just Power Chords. But in this lesson, I've got some more suggestions for you, but you want to have had those tips from the first one first of all. So if you haven't checked it out, head back over the website, check that one out first, and then come back and do this one. I'm going to give you five more song suggestions, songs that I would recommend that you try and work out on your own that are based around power chords. And each of them have got something about them that I think is good to learn. Okay, A lot of times when you start transcribing, it can be a bit overwhelming. There are so many different things to think about. So I've been scouring Spotify to try and find songs that I think are going to work great for you. And these ones are all, I think, real good. As usual, I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up in this lesson. But if you want some further tips, head on over to the website. There'll be some tip buttons, which you have to click to reveal the tip. Do try and work out the songs first without the tips and only use like tip one when you're like, oh, I'm totally stuck here. If you're still struggling, then hit click two, uh, tip two and uh, get some more hints. So, so the first song suggestion in this lesson is When I Come Around by Green Day, a pop punk classic. Relatively easy one. It's only got five chords, very obvious rhythm, but it's got something kind of interesting about it that I want you to observe. I'd love to inspire you to become a bit more of a detective now. Start looking a little bit further under the surface to work out how the songs were played. Now, this one was originally played on a guitar that was tuned down a semitone. Okay, so each of the strings would have been tuned down one semitone. E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and E flat would be the tuning it was originally played on. Now, it doesn't matter. When I first learned this song, I'd worked it out by ear and was playing it in bands for years before it even occurred to me that it might be detuned. Just didn't matter. doesn't matter. You can still play the song without mucking around with your tuning. So that would be a good thing to check out. But there is a clue here. If you listen, now that I've told you about it, after you maybe, maybe have a go at working it out in regular tuning, first of all, see if you can find the clue that tells you that it was originally played on a guitar that was tuned down a semitone. There's a very obvious clue in it for you now that I've told you. It should be obvious. So just, you can do it even without a guitar, just listening to it, especially what I would suggest is that you learn it without doing any funny tuning, first of all. Have a go right down, down the chords. As you're listening to it, you're probably going to be like, oh, this, this is the chord, but... Yeah, it kind of sounds a little different on the record. Like, what's going on here? Just listen. See if you can figure that out. As usual, there's going to be the tips over on the website as well. So if you're stuck on this and you're like, ah, I just can't do it on my own, head over to the website. But remember, don't use the tips until you really need to. Okay, really try and give it a good slog. Put a bit of hard work into it before you go for a cheat. Okay, the cheats will help you if you get stuck. Better to be able to do it with a, with a tip, I think, than just give up on it. But better, even better still is just like, Keep going. Keep trying, even if you find it really difficult. That's really normal when you're learning to transcribe. It's difficult. Need to remind you of that, right? Song two. Hate to say I told you so by the hives. What a killer tune this is. A, a, this is another one. I like it's bringing back all these memories of playing these cracking kind of pop punk kind of rock tunes. Um, this one's another one. It's relatively easy. It's got a cool thing like nearly all of the chords are played with a fifth string root. So they're power chords again. Fifth string root, one of them isn't. So as you're going through now, have a listen to that. Have a listen to how the chord on the thicker string sounds different. Okay, it's one of the things that you want to get used to is the sound of a chord played on the fifth string root and the sound of a chord played on the sixth string root because they sound different. If you listen to like a G chord, or a G chord up here, they're both G. But that G up the top sounds different, right? So that's one of those things that I want you to start listening out for is where are the chords played? Because that really makes a difference. Again, you can play the song with a chord. Sometimes it doesn't really matter. If I play B, or they sound the same, right? I would struggle to tell the difference between those. But the, like the lower down one and the higher down, higher up, that's, that's something that you want to learn to recognize, okay? So put, add that to your little bag of things that you do. And when you're transcribing, like, oh, hang on, that one sounds a little different to this one. It's one of those things just to keep an, an ear out for. I was going to say an eye out for, but you don't 
look at it, do you? Right? Well, I hope you don't. Okay, uh, let me just scroll down to my next song as the rain just, the heavens have opened out here, man. It's just started pouring with rain. It was real sunny about half an hour ago. I was out walking a dog. Anyway, um, third song, Smoking in the Boys' Room by Motley Crue. Okay, a little bit of an obscure one, but a really, really cool tune. This is a cool one. It's power chords all the way through. It's kind of like a classic kind of 50s rock kind of vibe going on here. It's usually a thing called sidestepping, where the chords go from a semitone below up to the kind of main chord. Something that is very common. It's one that once you get used to it a little bit more, you'll start to hear it straight away. I don't know if you catch that. It's a thunderstorm. Literally, really nice sunny day out there. Now pouring with rain, thunderstorm. Hey, love English summers. Sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, I've, again, on the website, there's a tip that'll give you all of the chords, but in the wrong order, but you shouldn't be, need it really. Uh, again, keep an ear out for which of the chords are played with a fifth string root and which are played with a sixth string root. There is a little bit of a rock and roll shuffle pattern in this. I'm not going to play it in the right key, but there's a bit of this. You don't have to play that. That's pretty difficult with it. It's a, you know, for a grade three to be doing a bit of a stretch if you can do it. You could have a go at it, but otherwise just just be playing the regular power chord is going to be fine as well. It is a shuffle rhythm, so it's something else that you want to be paying a bit of attention to is playing with a shuffle rhythm when you need to. Okay, it's kind of important. So uh, I think that's about it. I don't think I need to. Uh, tell you any more than that there is an interesting part in the bridge again i've given you a tip on the website that but i'd rather not tell you now just rather you have a go and discover that bit and go oh what's going on here this is a bit different okay, it's not that difficult song number four fell in love with a girl by the white stripes now this is definitely one you want to get your detective ears on for hearing the chords whether they're a fifth string root or a sixth string root should be very obvious there's no bass in this song okay it's guitar and drums and voice so Sometimes we rely on that bass sound to tell us where the root note is of the chord. It can be quite helpful. So taking it away, sometimes it sounds a little bit difficult. It makes it a little harder to do. A lot of white stripe stuff is really great to transcribe, though. It uses a lot of power chords. So and sometimes you'll find it's bar chords as well. They do remember that you can play any bar chord as a power chord anyway. So even if you're working on a song that's loads of bar chords, you can play it as power chords. It'll sound great. Okay, works on acoustic guitar as well. You know, I'm thinking like Polly by Nirvana is a really obvious one. Most of that unplugged Nirvana stuff's power chords kind of bass, so you might want to go and check out some of that stuff as well. One other thing with this song is to make sure that you listen to what the chords actually are and not what you think they're going to be. Now, I say that because it's something that I learned the hard way because very often when I was transcribing in my younger years, I would imagine it oh it's going to do this and i'd kind of play it and if you play over the top sometimes of things that you think it should be and it sounds kind of right you you can convince yourself it is right but it's actually not and then if you hear it again and you with an open ear you hear oh actually that that chord at the end of that sequence is this chord not that one that i thought it would have been right and i know that might sound a little bit strange but when you're transcribing we're used to patterns in music and particularly with chord progressions where we're used to hearing chords that move in a certain way and if one is slightly different to that our, our ears can kind of trick us into thinking it's a particular one when it isn't okay and this is this song has some of that stuff going on in it so uh you might want to keep an ear out for that as well so the last song i'm going to suggest for you today is self-esteem by offspring the Offspring are an incredible band for transcribing. Again, a lot of their stuff is pretty tricky. They have a lot of chords. They have a lot of movement in there. So it's kind of like riffs using power chords very often. So it can be tricky. This one's less tricky than that. Um, again, you've got a little bit of time spent to work out whether it's a six-string root or a fifth-string root because, again, it can make a difference for bands like The Offspring just the, to the sound of the actual song. Probably the most challenging part of learning this song will be getting the rhythms because it's not like simple straight eighth notes going do 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 you know there's do 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 there's this kind of the, the the rhythmic phrases are a little different there's some sections where the guitar drops out and there's just the bass that can be helpful for working out those rhythmic figures so you want to think a little bit about going da ba da ba da if you can you might rewrite one e and a two three and four 
one and a two, that kind of thing, thinking of actually in terms of uh, uh, 16th note values, if you know it. That's a little bit more of a grade four thing. That's where I start teaching uh, rhythmic dictation, which I think is a really useful thing if you're getting into transcribing. If you can do it now, great. If you can't, just think of it like maybe write down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, that kind of thing. That wasn't right, by the way. That's not on the track. So don't be going like, oh, he's just told me what it is. Okay, let's listen to it. Have, have a think about it. Is, is he doing all down picks or is he doing down and up picks? Can you tell the difference? How would one tell the difference if somebody was doing down, up, down, up, or all down? Just give it a bit of thought. Okay, not super important. It's not critical. But again, the more you start to train your ears to be a detective when you're working out songs, the more accurate the songs will be and the faster you'll transcribe. It's almost like you're doing a bit of exercises for your ears and you're learning to kind of focus them in on different things. Even if you're working on something that's maybe not the right it's not the exact thing that you're trying to work on like down and up picking you're just training your ears to get more focused in on the track and that can be really really helpful okay so don't forget there are tips over on the website you must have a go you must i would strongly suggest you have a go at doing it without any of the tips first of all and then if you get real stuck and you're like oh, i can't do it then go and have a look at the tips Okay, it's really good to to develop some grit to be like, I'm just going to keep trying at this. Because even if it feels like you're not getting any better, if you spend a whole like a half an hour session trying to transcribe a song and you didn't get much of it done, you will be better for it. Your ears will be better. Next time you do it, you'll be faster at doing the song. You'll make more progress. I know how frustrating it is. I've seen it on loads of students over the years, loads of guys, guys and girls just saying like, I can't do it. I can't transcribe that song. I'm like, well, okay, try this easier song. They can do it real easy. So they tried a slightly harder one. They developed their listening skills and then they've gone back. Okay, so you might find that that happens for you as well. Like I said, if you don't get into transcribing, if you don't actually do it, you're never going to get better at it. So the people that say, oh, I can never work out songs by ear. It's like, how often have you tried? Well, I tried once for five minutes and I couldn't work out a single thing. Yeah, it's going to take more than that. Okay, it's going to take some work. We're talking about hours of work here to learn how to do it. But the pleasure that you get from being able to work out songs on your own is incredible. Just, well, I can listen to any song. Yeah, I'll say any song. Even real super complex songs, I can work them out. It takes, <laughs> takes quite a long time if I'm going to try and work out like an Eric Johnson song, right? That takes hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. But most songs, simple pop songs or whatever, I can work them out before the end of the song. Taylor Swift song, you put it on, I'll be playing along with the song before it's finished for sure, if not by the end of the first chorus. Because I'm used to the patterns, I'm used to what the, I'm, I know, oh, here's that sound, that sounds like this chord progression. Those are the skills that you get. If you work out self-esteem by the offspring, that chord progression is one of the most common ones of all time. So once you've heard that song and you've heard that chord progression, next time you hear a song with that chord progression, you'll be like, man, that sounds like the Offspring song. You find what position it's in, like what key it's in, and you already, your fingers will kind of already know the shape of the root notes. You'll know where it's going over a string or up, and it, it, it really works. I promise you, it's so, so worth the effort, but it does take some effort. But hey, I think nearly everything in life that's really valuable takes a bit of hard work. So off you go. Try have a go at working out these songs. Let me know in the comments over on the website how you got on or on YouTube if you're not on the website. Why wouldn't you be over on the website? That's where all of the good stuff is, right? But if not, you can let me know in the comments here. How did you get on? Do you find it real easy? Do you find it really hard? What were the struggles? What were the difficulties? Let me know. I'll see if I can add in extra stuff to make these lesson series even better. But of course, you'll only get the full, full effect lessons over at grade three on the justaguitar.com website. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Good luck with transcribing these. And I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye-bye.